dreams, you about to make a killing. Fuck the hater, you don't care about the way they feeling. Won't stop till you big will it. Can't stop till you lose a ceiling. Pop a bottle, celebrate another win on them. Toss dollars if you got them, go and spend on them. Cause it ain't nothing when you winning, yeah. What's good, YouTube? You are back with another episode of Sound Sense Academy with your boy Sense, and we just gonna get right into it. Today, we are doing vocal chain again, but for the vocal bus. You know what I'm saying? So the last time we did it for the vocal track, this time I'm gonna show you my process for the vocal bus, cause you know, I ain't really wanna do too much that first time. Like that first, I mean, that first part of the tutorial was like 25 minutes, man. You know what I'm saying? So if I imagine if I had done both, you'd have been in here scratching your head like, what the fuck is this nigga talking about? All right. So let's get into it, man. Uh, what we going to do, first of all, is come here to open recents. And I believe I saved it under newbie template three. I don't know. I don't know. We're going to see right now. So I was working on something else for a client just now, a mix and master. Oh, please do remember if you need mixing and mastering, hit me up at the email below in the extra info section. All right. Um, if you need one on one private lessons, hit me up at the email below. Also, feel free to sign up for the Patreon. I'm going to have some extra info on there that I'm not putting on the YouTube page. Uh, some little extra sauce and stuff like some of my own personal templates that I wouldn't really show anybody else. But I'll show y'all because y'all special. You know what I'm saying? Um, once again, I want to thank everybody who dropped a comment. Uh, it was only one in this last video, but you know, I appreciate all of them, man. I'm not like no stuck up nigga. I appreciate every single one, you know, uh, and it's always going to be like that. No matter how big we grow, you feel me? So, um, yeah, thank y'all. Uh, let's go on. So we set up our basic template, uh, well, our basic vocal chain for the vocal track all right now instead of having to uh drag and drop those um plugins to all of our vocal tracks which you do by holding down option sorry i have mac so whatever option is for y'all option clicking on the plugin and then dragging it down and then it will move it to wherever you move it like you want to move it up here you want to move it down there you know what i'm saying um so uh i'm just gonna go to no insert uh instead of doing that what you want to do if you want to copy your vocal track and have the exact same plugins with the exact same settings you come to the title of your vocal track you hold down control click and then you go to duplicate you want to deactivate active playlists because that will duplicate the actual waveform as well you want to deactivate alternate playlists which is something that we'll get into later basically you could put several takes on top of each other by using alternate playlists it's a really cool tool that comes in handy when i am working with somebody who, um, you know, well, actually anybody really, but if you are having problems with getting your take done in the first take, but you have several takes where, you know, you had some good sections, what I do is called doctoring. So I'll, I'll have that person do several takes, uh, on the same track, uh, with alternate playlists, and then I'll chop together the best pieces of all of those takes and that is beautiful magic it just like we'll get into it later on down the line then the last thing you're going to remove is automation all right so that's any 
let's not even speak about that yet because that's a whole other level that's gonna blow your fucking mind man um but there's so many interesting aspects to this program but for now you press okay we get into it now you have two vocal tracks all right so i'm just showing you how to duplicate your vocal tracks so you don't have to redo everything right now if you want to say put your backups here and then you just want to put like a chorus effect on it now you just add your doubler and now you know you have your backups um i know you're not gonna some of you may understand what that is some of you may not but it was just a quick example of how you can customize the duplication to fit whatever needs you have for that track all right but now we are gonna go into the vocal bus vocal chain all right um all right here we go so first of all as always i like to start with a noise reduction once you add all of those plugins and effects it can tend to make a lot of the background noise a little bit louder uh, so the first thing you want to do is add that ns1 or any other noise reduction that you have acquired um, like I said, this one is pretty simple. You just want to kind of take this one track, play your vocal back and kind of move this until you hear it or move most of the background noise, but not affect the main vocal. All right. Cool. So, um, the next thing you're going to do is add another EQ for another layer of uh, 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 bass cut which is also known as high pass hpf high pass filter all right, all right but like we discussed in the last um tutorial i may use these phrases interchangeably because a lot of the official phrases i find personally confusing maybe i'm slow Maybe you want to use high pass filter, go right on ahead. But if you hear me say bass cut, just know that I am talking about a high pass filter, right? So now you've turned on your high pass filter. It's getting ready to cut out some more of your bass. Like I said, I like to have it in a medium angle. And then you're going to take the frequency and move it down again so that the point ends at around 80 anywhere from 60 to 80 because I feel like it's an episode of blues clues because I don't like waiting for your response, but <laughs> yeah, your 808s, your bass in your track will dance from zero to 60 or zero to 80. Anywhere between there is where your bass tends to rattle and give your track life. So now if your voice has too much in that low end frequency, it's going to cause a clash. And then that's how you end up with mixes that sound very muddy, not bright, dull. They just sound like they just sound dead. You don't want to listen to that, shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? So this is my process. I know somewhere out there, there's probably an engineer looking at that like, ah, ah, like, you know what I'm saying? Like on some real just super purist that why is he doing that this is what i do it works my music sounds amazing everybody who i deal with loves the quality of my work so y'all all right so we're gonna keep it going all right so another layer of bass cuts right and honestly if you have a lot of external hardware it can cut out a lot of this work but you know all i got is this you know what i'm saying probably like a lot of y'all you know what I'm saying? So you're going to have to do a lot of your work in program. OK, here we go. So that's another layer of base cut or high pass filter. Right. Um, the next thing you're going to do is add a another EQ. Uh, but you're going to want a, a, a six band EQ at least. All right. So this basically tells you how many of these little nodes it's going to present you with to adjust different sections of the track right 
So this is a this is a seven. This is a uh, a seven band filter up here, just the standard one that comes with Pro Tools. All right. Uh, so it gives you seven little nodes that you can work with. All right. Um, you're going to want at least a six band node for your vocal cleaning EQ. All right. At least nothing less than six bands. You need at least six bands. All right. Um, and this will give you the ability. Sorry. I don't know why it didn't pull up. See, this is one I have never used in my entire life. I don't like knobs. You know what I mean? I can, I prefer to have the little nodes so that I can, you know, make my manual adjustments. I personally prefer the F6. However, I have not purchased it yet and it didn't come with any of my kits. So currently I use the Q10. This is cool. It's decent. I mean, not decent. It's better than decent. It's just like it has a different feel from the F6 and I prefer the F6. So if you want, please go out and purchase the F6. It's only $29 on waves. I will provide the link below. Um, but here, this is our vocal cleaning EQ. All right. So first thing you're going to want to do in your vocal cleaning EQ is once again, do a little bass cut or high pass filter. Uh, these ones, the numbers are a little bit more clear, a little bit more prominent, so you don't have to squint and see what the f you're doing, um, which is always nice. It's always nice. You know what I mean? Especially when you blind like me. Um, and then I don't want to get too much into this because I'm going to do a entire course on EQing your vocals and making them as clean as possible. But this process is where you get the glitter, the gold. This is the magic. All right. I can't wait to get into this and show you guys this because I nerd out for this. Like this shit is super fun. All right. So how I was taught and how and it, the way that has worked the best for me and shout out to uh I got to come back and drop his name or something because I, I really forgot his name. And I feel ashamed about that because I won this co competition in Toronto and he was actually somebody who championed for me because I was too old to win the competition by like a year or something like that. But he was like, yo, this dude is super talented. We want him in the program. And um, he really fought for me and got me into the program. And um, yeah, really ashamed about that. Oh, man. So many mistakes that I made with those relationships, but you got to live and learn. Right. But um, yeah. So, you know, he taught me he, you put your angle and the angle of your point comes from your cue. That part will always be the same. Right. So this is number two. And you can see how moving it up will make the angle more narrow and moving it back will make it more broad. All right, so standard, it comes at about seven, which is good for the amount of uh, nodes that it provides you with, right? And then you're going to scan this until you hear something that you don't like. All right, when you hear something that you don't like, something that sounds harsh to your ears, you are just going to drop the gain on that. And usually it's your first node is going to be around here. You could widen it a little bit, make it as smooth as possible. You want your transitions to be as smooth, smooth as possible. Say you go around here and you find another one. Ugh, that sounds weird. I don't like that. Take that out. What this is doing is essentially finding all of the frequencies in your voice that you do not gel with. All of the frequencies in your subject's voice that does not gel with the track, that doesn't sound good with the track, that doesn't sound, that's adding harshness to the vocals, and you're moving them out. 
that's all cleaning vocals is. It's not like it's not complicated. It's not complicated, bro. People try and make it sound like it's it's rocket science, and it looks like it's rocket science because you got all these little knobs and nodes and are all over the. Place. Trust me, this shit is simple. And if you have a good ear, is all that determines how good that you get at this, right? If you're like half deaf or like everybody has different ranges of professionalism in their ear and how how much they can identify frequencies that, you know, just rub them the wrong way. So everybody's not going to be the best mixer. Everybody's not going to be the best master. Everybody's not going to be the best, but this will get you to a better level. And everybody has a good enough ear to enhance the quality of their sound. All right. So, you know, as you're moving through these, you just continue to move through them. One, two, three, four, five, six, and clean up your track. All right. Now, should I give you the extra sauce? No. No. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I know you guys are like, give me the sauce. Give me the sauce. I'm not going to do it. Maybe later on down the line when we get to like a thousand subscribers, I'll drop the sauce as a thank you for everything that you guys have done helping me get to this point or whatever. But for now, we got 20 subscribers. And I don't feel like it. All right. So I'm going to give you something else. Um, feel free to use something like a CLA vocal. And this has a lot of in plugin settings that you can use to adjust the feel and the texture of your track. Here is your delays, eighths, slaps, quarters. You'll eventually come to understand what this means. It's just like very technical, um, you know, music measurement talk. But at the end of the day, it doesn't fucking matter what they call it. They could call this like well up was the fuck did I just say? They could call it literally anything. What matters is how it feels. You turn this on, and as long as your tempo is set to the correct speed, then this will fall in perfect timing. So if you put it at a quarter and you're like, ah, I don't like how those delays sound, those echoes sound. They're a little too slow. I want something a little faster Then you go to your eights. And how does it feel to you? OK, I feel like that feels a little awkward. Let's try it at a slap. OK, I like that. That gives it a little bit more of a vibe or whatever the case may be. Now, from there, you could turn your slap up or you're you're turning up the amount of whatever effect you're putting on there. All right. So your quarter, you might be yoking it up because you really want that in the forefront you really want people to hear that or you might have it down here because you want it to be more subtle and something that just adds a light texture to it um this is your reverb tight chamber and we'll do all of this again when we have vocals in the track just so that you can hear how it affects the track but right now i just want you to understand the principles i don't want you to get too much into the functioning all right um, so, you know, you have a tight, which is obviously a smaller room. You have a large room, which is bigger. And then you have a chamber, which is like fucking, uh, charger stadium. <laughs> Do the Chargers have their own stadium. Like they share it with the Rams. Now, I don't know why they left San Diego. Why did they leave San Diego? San Diego loved the Chargers. I don't understand how that happened. Anyhow, um, this is your compressions. You have like push, spank, some kinky shit, uh, wall, um, you know, and this is like, I can't really. Okay, so this is more of your, this is more of like a counter amplification, right? So like, as you are, these are, Y'all looking at me like, dude, do, do you even know what you're talking about at this point? 
Yeah, all right, cool. These are two compression aspects, right? And this is basically how it pushes your voice upwards. And this is how it keeps it down, right? Remember when we were talking about compression and I was talking about those gateways. Um, so this breaks it down and makes it more simple. And this just says, hey, I want my voice to be a little bit louder. And this roof here to be a little lower or whatever or I want the top to be like the way that that roof feels. This is what your these options are for how that roof feels. And some of them will feel sharper and some of them will feel softer. And you have to just decide which one feels best for your track. This will also tell you how harsh your push is, like how how that that amplification feels. You know what I mean? I don't really use this cuz like I said I don't really like Oh. <laughs> Okay, cool. So yeah, you could push up subs, subtones, which are the lower ends. Like I said, you don't want any subtones in your vocal mix. It's just like, especially if you're doing hip hop, there's too much 808. Maybe if you're not doing hip hop, I don't know. I don't know. Because I just feel like when you have subtones in your voice, it just does a little, it does weird does, I'm trying not to swear because I really want to get monetized. So <laughs> I'm trying not to swear, guys. I apologize. Um, and lower tones, lower frequencies, or your upper frequencies, you could turn those up or turn them down. Or you could turn up your lower frequencies or turn them down. You know what I'm saying? You Or if you don't want to use this tab at all, you just click it, turn it off. Same with all of these. If there's other stuff that you don't want to use, say you have your compression just the way you want it, you don't want to mess with it. And you just want some reverb and some delay and maybe to affect the way that the vocals spread um then you could play with these or if you want to turn them off and just leave your vocals the same except for uh your your reverb and your delay cool or if you only want one of them go ahead you know what i mean it's your world you know what i'm saying it's, be creative as you want with this feel me um all right. After that, what you're going to want to do is have a. This is pretty important, guys. All right. The Esser, especially hip hop, especially R&B. I can't even picture a genre where this wouldn't be necessary, because as you're going through your process of cleaning and uh making things sound better uh you do tend to create more high end and what that does is make your s's and sounds like this very harsh and it makes things a little bit difficult you know what i'm saying so what you want to do is cut out some of that of that hissing you dig me? So what we're going to do here is come to mail S and it will give you like a standard format for the frequency where those S's really start to peak in the male voice. Or if you're dealing with a female voice, you come down here and go female S and then, you know, it gives you the approximate frequencies and you're going to want to start playing with these as you get more comfortable with it. And, you know, sound, feel what sounds better. And basically, if your voice is coming up to here, you're going to want to move this tracking point below. Say your voice is coming up to 20. You want to move your vo this tracking point below until this meter it will light up red. You don't want it to go below six. That's the the ten, the rule of thumb. You don't want that to go below six or else those S's are being over compressed. It's going to make your voice It's going to reduce the quality of your sound, essentially. You know what I mean? But you want to bring this down to a point where it's cutting those S's, but not going past six. All right. And you also want to mess with your frequency to a point where it sounds the cleanest cutting out those S's. All right. And there you have it. That is mostly what you need out of your basic vocal compression. However, 
there is something else that I do want to add, right? That I always put in and I'm just going to give you this sauce for free. And here we go. All right. Sorry. So what I did there was press command equal and it basically switched from the recording screen to the mixing screen. These screens are exactly the same. This one is just exclusively for everything that's going on in your mix. All right. So here we go. What I do like to add is a Renaissance Vox. Our Vox. All right. And uh, you're just going to pull this down until your vocals, once again, come to about no more than a minus six. All right. So that may be here. That may be there. That may be wherever. But you're going to want to adjust that. And it, what it does is add an additional layer of compression that really brings out your voice and just really brings out all of those good qualities that you just brought into your voice. It really just highlights it again. Now, what I'm going to do after that, slap a noise reduction on. Because like I said, you're bringing everything up, so you kind of just want to mitigate that. I usually leave, leave that at zero. All right. And our next, our next tutorial, we will get into parallel compression, right? Which is the next stage of which is the next stage of your vocal buzz. Um, I always use parallel compression personally because I don't have external hardware. If you have external hardware, you may not need it. Although I still use it even when I'm at the studio where we got like four external compressors that are like super high quality. I just, I just like using it guys. I don't, I don't know what else to tell you. I don't know what to look, but we're going to get into that. That whole thing. Next tutorial. All right. And should I show you how that's going to begin? Yeah, I'm going to show you how that's going to begin. All right. So now you're going to switch back to your recording screen. So you see exactly what I'm doing. All right. This is the vocal bus. All right. So what we want to do is create another auxiliary input. Remember that from our first tutorial? Yeah. Yeah. It's coming back, right? Okay, so what's the first thing I told y'all, man, about them auxiliary inputs when you have something for a bus channel? Never in mono, always in stereo, right? So it's going to be in stereo. And you're going to come here and go to your auxiliary input. All right, you're going to leave it at that. If you want to call it comp, comp for compression, cool. Now you have your compression channel and next tutorial, we will go in, in all into details about how to set that up, how to do what you need to do. Yeah. And it's going to be fun, man. It's going to be fun. And for that one, we're going to actually use a vocal. So once again, if you need mixing and mastering, please email me at the address below. Also, your first mix and master will be free. If you mention this video, what else should I tell you? Um, if you need one on one training, tap in with me. I got you. We'll Skype. If you're in the area, you can link up whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but uh, we can do that. If you need studio sessions booked at uh, the major studio that I work for in Lemon Grove, tap in with me. We got great rates. Um, yeah. Any questions, comments, uh, suggestions that you have, please reach out to me. Um, always happy to hear back from y'all. And I already know what time it is, man. Family money, everything. Sound Sense Academy. Let's get it, baby. Whoa. You got big dreams, you about to make a killing Fuck the hater, you don't care about the way they feeling Won't stop till you big will it Can't stop till you lose a ceiling Pop a bottle, celebrate another win on them Toss a dollars if you got them, go and spend on them Cause if
Cause it ain't nothing when you winning yet